Hello, my name is Oren McKaylee, and I'm the maker of Medical Espresso. Please take a moment to read the disclaimer. If, you, if I've used any images that you've created and they've been used inappropriately or if you have not been cited correctly, please send me an email ASAP so I can fix the error. Thank you very much. Please enjoy the lecture. This portion of the hepatobiliary review is going to focus on the anatomy of the hepatobiliary system. We'll start off with the macroscopic, and then we'll work our way into the microscopic anatomy. The first place to start is the location of the liver. And the liver is located in the right upper quadrant, as you can see over here. Uh, its exterior landmarks are going to be the fifth rib at the midclavicular line, and it'll extend down to more or less the tenth rib anteriorly. But keep in mind, if your liver is enlarged, it could come all the way out. So I don't like to use the inferior landmark for any purposes. Just know that it should be about nine centimeters. The gallbladder, if you, look at a, if you look at a live person, is actually continuous with the liver, on the inferior border of the liver. If inflamed, you can elicit pain by reaching under the right rib, uh, by reaching under the right rib cage of the patient. The official test is actually called the Murphy's test, and there they'll have you tell the patient to exhale first, stick your fingers under the ribs, and then you ask them to inhale. If they stop breathing due to pain, you know that that's where you're gonna, you know, you know that that's gonna be a positive sign. Now, I didn't really include any pictures, so it's not important, but in my opinion, however, I'll mention it anyway. There are two ligaments in the liver, and I'm gonna kind of draw those in blue. So the first one's going to be the coronary ligament. That's what attaches the liver to the diaphragm. And then you're also going to have the falciform ligament, and that kind of just pops down that way. I see no purpose in you knowing it. I don't think you're going to be tested on, on the boards. However, maybe for class, they might want you to know. So there we go. Um, again, uh, here you kind of just see a little bit better, so I'm just going to outline it again. So this little groove, that would have been the falciform ligament. And kind of just up here, you would have the coronary ligament. Again, it serves no function, so I, don't, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, so basically, you have to understand, hepatocytes... Um, are going to basically initially secrete bile into canaliculi, right? So here I kind of focus on the bile flow, which is the purpose of this slide. And the canaliculi in the liver converge to form small, a series of small bile duct tools that go into other ducts, and the names of them aren't really important because they're going to keep on getting larger and larger. Uh, the bile is then going to be carried to the gallbladder via the right and left hepatic ducts, which you kind of see over here that I've outlined, and they're going to lead into the common bile duct, right? And then they're going to somewhat reflux back into the cystic duct, and it's going to be stored in the gallbladder. Um, the common bile duct then will connect with the pancreatic duct down there, where it will then go into the duodenum through the sphincter of Odi. And that's basically your bile flow. If you know that, you're pretty much good. Um, an interior landmark from the duodenum, you'll see it's going to called the ambula of water. Eh, you could get tested on it, but not that high yield. So if we take a step further, I included this slide because it's very important. Um, as far, I hated learning it, but the bottom line is it turned out in rotations and that I actually need to know this very common pimping question. Everyone's going to be pimped on it. So, and that's pretty much a guarantee. Um, whether you're scrubbing into a lab coli or whether you're going to actually go into surgery, this is called the triangle of Colo. Uh, the borders of the triangle um, can be remembered as the three C's, the cystic duct, the common bile duct, and the cystic artery. So cystic duct, right? It's that common bile duct, and the cystic artery is, I'll switch my colors to kind of see it, up there, right? And some of your professors may say that that uh, superior border is going to be the inferior edge of the liver. However, according to Gastroenterology Journal, which I gave you the, the source right there at the bottom, of the, the bottom left of the screen, that's not the case. So if you want to impress some of your professors, some of your attendings, you can show them that the literature doesn't quite support that. Moving on, so here we're going to discuss the blood flow as far as the liver goes. So the liver has an interesting blood flow. Uh, it receives blood from both the right, from both the hepatic artery the port and the portal circulation. That's why infarctions in the liver are super rare. So if you see that as a question on the test, don't really notice it. Now, as far as the color schema goes, I use green for portal circulation, I use red for arterial circulation, and I use blue for the venous system. Um, just kind of separate each one of these. Uh, the arterial supply goes from the aorta, which, as you can see, I very artistically drew right here, uh, into the celiac trunk. Uh, this, so the celiac trunk branches off into the common hepatic artery, which, you kind of, which is going to be the top one over there. Um, which further divides into, which further splits into the right and left hepatic artery when we get into the liver. So let's call this one's going to be the right, this one's going to be, this one's going to be the right, this one's going to be the left. Um, the right hepatic artery will give off a branch that goes to the gallbladder, right? So we said this is the right hepatic artery, it gave off that branch into the gallbladder, and that's going to be called the cystic artery. The liver also receives nutrient or drug-rich blood, for that matter, from the GI tract through the, through the port hepatis, or the portal vein, um, which goes into the liver. The branches are basically coming off of any of the embryologically GI structures except for the lungs. So we have the gastrosplenic artery, which is going to come from the stomach, spleen, pancreas. There's a superior, I mean, did I say artery? I take that back. We have the gastrosplenic vein from the stomach, spleen, and pancreas, uh, the superior mesenteric vein from the small intestine, and the inferior mesenteric vein from the large intestine. The liver has three main veins. It has it has the right hepatic vein, left hepatic vein, intermediate hepatic vein, and they're all going to drain directly into the inferior vena cava. Here we have the port here we have the hepatic lobule, and essentially that's going to be built around the central around the central vein. Um, another thing that there's the portal lobule, which is kind of a triangle, which we'll discuss in a bit, and that's focused around the portal triad. So what 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 are the what are the what, what, what are we looking at here essentially? Um, well, we have the portal arterial, right, which is kind of noted over here. It's going to be on the corners, and that's going to receive supply from the hepatic artery. Um, Next, we have, we'll just talk about the central vein. So the central vein will keep on branching out, and that will become part of the actual hepatic veins, which will then enter the IVC, or the inferior vena cava. Um, we also have a bunch of little portal venules, right? And these portal venules are going to come from the GI tract, and they will eventually give off blood that will flow towards the central vein. Uh, we're going to look at some more photos of these, I'm going to get into a little more detail in a second. Here, what we're looking at is a close-up of the basic structures of that liver lobule. So again, we have the hepatic portal vein, we have the hepatic arteries or arterioles. I think I might have made a mistake. It said portal before. If so, oops. Um, and what do we have here? What are we showing here? So you see that bile, bile flows to the bile duct through the canaliculi. Okay? So basically, if you follow my panel, use black this time, we have bile that's being made by each of these little hepatocytes. And it's being secreted. And it's flowing down this way. 
right? So again, it's going to flow towards the ductal, towards those ductals. Okay. Then at the same time, we also have the arterial blood flow, which eventually, which originally is from the aorta, right? So it's oxygenated blood. It's going to flow down and it's going to supply blood to all these hepatocytes and all these structures that need blood, right? It's going to flow right down there. Um, then we also, at the same time, we also have the portal circulation, right? Now here we see this portal circulation, right? It's coming from the portal vein and also which is flowing through towards the central vein. So the portal flow and the arterial flow will eventually converge at the central vein. So if we take a look a little further into some of these structures, what we're going to see is we also have something called uh, an asinus. The hepatic asinus is another way of basically structuring the function of the liver. So you're not really looking at, it's not a clearly defined structure if you look as far as microscopically, but functionally it is, and it's divided into a few different zones. The first zone is going to be closest to the arterial blood flow, and that's where you're going to have the most oxygen, of course, then you're going to have the second zone, then you're going to have the third zone. Um, and we're going to take a look at this and basically all these structures in the next slide, and we can discuss them in a lot more detail. Just kind of get an idea of what this looks like. Okay, so if we break everything down, these are the structures that we have, and we're going to discuss each of these right now in depth. So first off, we have the Kupfer cells, right? So you can kind of follow that along, what the Kupfer cells are, and Essentially, they're macrophages. There's nothing special about them. Moving on. Next, we have the space of Dissay. Okay, the space of Dissay, if you notice, it's going to be this space right here. It almost looks like it doesn't exist. And that's where blood plasma will be, blood plasma will be filled in that space, and it's between the hepatocytes and the endothelial cells that line the sinusoids. Okay? Now, the sinusoid is going to be this space right here, and it might as well be a little capillary, as far as you're concerned. Okay? Now, within the space of Dissay, there's also going to be called something called stellate cells. Um, and the stellate cells, let's see, see these guys over here are going to be our stellate cells. And they're going to store fat and fat-soluble vitamins. And when antagonized, these cells will mature into fibroblasts, and they're what's going to cause fibrosis and cirrhosis. That you'll classically see if you, look at a, if you look at a messed up liver. Um, and, of course, we have endothelial cells. I think we all kind of know what they are. And we also have in green the biocanaliculi, and you basically kind of figure that out, too. No need, no need to expand on that. Um, so the hepatic asinus. So before we showed it as diamond-shaped, and we showed the blood flow, is going to be both from the hepatic artery and the portal veins. So zone one which is over here, right? So if we kind of break this down into three different zones, zone one is going to be the periportal zone. Periportal because the portal vein, obviously. Rich supply of oxygen since it's closer to the artery. That should be that should make sense. Um, in, hypo in a hypoxic state, this will get the least amount of damage because it will get most of the oxygen before the oxygen flows to the central vein. Um, so essentially, it's going to be responsible for very metabolic metabolically active things such as making carbohydrates or making proteins, which the liver does plenty of, and we'll expand on that a little bit later. This is also going to be the first area to be damaged by viral hepatitis. Um, zone two is the intermediate zone. Um, aside from damage happening here in yellow fever, there's nothing special to know. And keep in mind, it's a gradient. There's no clear cut zone. It's up, you know, keep in mind, it's all gradual. Uh, zone three, that's going to be where you're going to have most of your cytochromes enzymes are present, and drug detoxification will happen here. So if you take too much Tylenol and that shows up on your test, and you want to know where most of the damage will occur, it's going to happen closest to that central vein. Um, that's about it as far as anatomy goes. I hope this was helpful.